so I'm with uh, Paul Ciccone. He is the, uh, what is it, senior, I already forgot, senior. Uh, senior director of pro video marketing here at Adobe. There we go. That's what he does. He does all the important stuff for us uh, film folks. You know, there's a lot of illustrators and uh, designers and stuff around. This is our guy here for pro video. Um, so uh, why don't you give us kind of a quick rundown or sure. however speed you want okay. of uh, what's new with uh, Premiere and After Effects and stuff. So we introduced uh, version 23 of Premiere and After Effects at the show, and we've got some great new improvements specifically in Premiere for titling, so you can now adjust inner and outer strokes on titles. Um, there are now new alignment controls, so you can you know right click on the, the viewer and just automatically align elements and objects together, text and graphics, so that's, oh, that's really nice. cool. Yeah, it's a really nice addition, uh, total time saver. You can also now bulk edit uh, title. So you can select a bunch of titles in your timeline, change all the fonts at once, change all the sizes. Oh, lovely. I, I know. Love that for me. <laughs> love that. Users are going to love it. It's uh, <laughs> it's really, really great stuff. We also uh, doubled the performance of Mogurt performance in uh, Premiere. So just like uh, they had multi-frame rendering in After Effects uh, last year, we've added multi-frame rendering support to Mogurt's in um, Premiere. So now performance is about double what it used to be, which is great. You know, everybody loves it when uh, their titles play back and render faster. Yeah. I was just, you know, I was just making the uh, the intro title for this last night, and I was like, I wonder when they're going to speed this up. It, 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 <laughs> four <Today>. hours later. <laughs> yeah. Four hours later. <laughs> we aim to please. Um, let's see, what else have we got? We got uh, improved ABC intro performance. We're oh, now supporting AAF on Apple Silicon. We've also got GPU accelerated uh, Lumetri scopes, so when you're color correcting, you get better playback and better looking scopes. So that's great because I actually have my my system's pretty good, but it's about mid tier, uh, you know, like uh, seventh gen kind of stuff. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll often have to toggle out of the uh, scopes just to keep everything a little snappy. Just to keep so that's everything to playing. Yeah, we've also uh, made ProRes four two two LT the default format for rendering on. Um, on Mac and Windows, so when you're rendering effects, it's just much faster, it's a better playback on the system, a little smoother. And of course, when you render your final project, you get the highest possible quality. Totally. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, that's all great. I have no notes. <laughs> <laughs> you have no notes. So it was really important for us with Premiere specifically with this release is, you know, we know that everyone out there that's editing on Premiere has a lot of feature requests, and, and so we're trying to do the little things that make your lives a lot better. like the alignment of the text or just performance in general, like the GPU stuff. So we're really listening to the users to try and put in the things that are really going to make a difference. So it's a great release. It's got a lot of quality of life improvements. And it is also the most stable version of Premiere we have ever shipped. So um, we good. worked really hard to make sure that you know crash rates and everything like that are down really low. So we think customers are going to be super happy. We hope you all upgrade to 23 and give it a shot because it's um, it's pretty amazing. I am one of the uh, the scary people who just auto update everything. <laughs> Uh, even like in the middle, maybe, uh, no, I still no, do. No, don't do I'm that. Don't. I'm so wanton with it, I'll be like, eh, new one. No. Uh, yeah, not, you're not supposed to switch major ones between uh, Okay, so this is a, a PSA. Yeah. Don't, don't upgrade don't in the middle of a project. That's just bad project hygiene. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, uh, so you're saying 23, most stable. Who, uh, a question that I'll, uh, not that I get asked it, but I see it a lot, is like, uh, obviously Premiere, you've got everyone from, David Fincher using it all the way down to someone making Instagram videos. Yep. Uh, do you, is there kind of an internal um, balance between which notes, not that you take more seriously because they're all important, but like um, how do you prioritize that kind of uh, uh, asset, man, or, uh, asset allocation? Or what, what's the word I'm looking for? How do we prioritize? You know I mean? How do we yeah, prioritize yeah, what we're doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's hard because you know there's there's the very very high end of of the world that's doing the feature films and the episodic television shows that we all watch on on Netflix or Apple or whatever. Um, they have they're really demanding and they've got really great ideas and suggestions and things they want to do and, and we do try to support and service them as much as possible. But then we have millions and millions and millions right. of people doing everything else right. who also have needs. So um, it is a delicate balancing act. I cannot say that there's a secret formula that we use. Sure. You know, sometimes you might ask for a feature that's super easy. We're like, yeah, we can bang that out. And you know, some someone else might ask for something that sounds easy that we're like, oh, that one's going to take a couple of months or years. So, yeah. well, and I can imagine on yeah. the. Uh, I hesitate to say the lower end, but on the on the smaller end of the scale, there's way more people, and they're potentially doing 
off, like off label stuff. Whereas like the movie theaters are kind of like, or movie movie producers are like, they need about ten things, you know, overall that are right. maybe a little easier to, to bang down. Yeah, and when you're working on the the higher end feature films and episodic and commercial work, typically you're working with high end computers, high end graphics cards. Usually there's a support system in place, right? They've locked down their workflow so things don't change mid production, right. and they've tested it all so they know it's going to work. Yeah, yeah. So what we hear from a high end are like, it would be nice if I could do this, right? You know, yeah. um, as opposed to on the lower end, people could be using, you know, a MacBook Air or a 10 year old Dell laptop, right? Yeah, yeah. With no GPU. And, you know, so that's where we start to see a lot of, you know, what's a the, lot of differences in, in performance. Totally. And so uh, obviously GPU support, uh, especially with these crazy new RTX cards coming out and stuff like that. Um, What's, what's the future look like that for Premiere? Because I know a lot of it is um, not necessarily GPU accelerated. Yeah. Uh, what, are, what are the steps you have to take to kind of uh, start integrating those GPU workflows? Yeah, that's a really great question. So we've already started doing that. Um, a lot, there's a lot of GPU acceleration in Premiere already. I would say that the most popular filters and effects and things that you do are GPU accelerated. There's still work to be done and room to grow, of course. But we're now at the point where it is safe for us to say, there isn't a system out there that doesn't have a decent GPU, right? right We're right. past that hump now where back in the day you had to do CPU and GPU. So, so I think moving forward, you're going to see us focus a lot more on that GPU first um, because everybody's got a GPU. I right. mean, and they're really fast. You know, we look at the, the, the Apple Silicon, the GPUs on there, and the things are just screaming. And then you look at the NVIDIA stuff and, you know, there isn't a system you can buy without a decent GPU today. Yeah, from Puget Systems. Um, I just like them. I don't work for them. Uh, also, I heard there was something cool with like Character Animator that just uh, came out. Yeah, so Character Animator, there's a new motion library and it's in beta. And basically, it's about 350 presets of things like running, hopscotch, fighting. You know, so just pre-baked animation moves so that you can you know create your character and boom, animate it without having to manually keyframe or set any of that up. So that's pretty exciting. I, we think it's going to allow a lot more people to use Character Animator and come up with cool animations without you know necessarily having to learn a lot about keyframing and animation techniques. Totally. Um, and we've got some great stuff in After Effects as well. So um, After Effects, we have selectable track mat layers. So so a mat is the you know the layer that defines areas the of transparency, mask. the yeah. mask, right? So used to be that you would have to put a mat on every layer for After Effects. Well, now you can use a track mat and assign it to multiple layers. Excellent. So makes for smaller, less complex project compositions, right? So you don't have to twiddle open 100 layers and mess with 100 mats. If you want to make a global change, you just change it in the one place and it changes. So that's really cool. Yeah. Um, we've added 50 animation presets to uh, After Effects as well. So you know things like drawing a rectangle or you know adding motion to something just so again like character animator so you don't have to make all of these basic keyframe animations from scratch yeah. we give you a starting point so there's 50 new presets for that there are some project presets now to support the different resolutions and frame rates and sizes of social media posts so when you start a project you can get started faster um, native h.264 encoding right from after effects so oh, awesome you don't have to send out to media encoder you can actually just do it right from after effects if you want um, so there's a bunch of really cool stuff in both uh, Premiere and After Effects, and of course now Character Animator coming on board strong. Yeah, and you know the, the Character Animator stuff's pretty fun. I, I actually used it to do uh, streaming with a character instead of oh, did myself. You, instead of you? Yeah, so I could see a lot of people more creative than me yeah. uh, taking, especially those presets and being able to run with it. Yeah. And if you're interested in 3D specifically, yeah. um, we have some beta features in After Effects. You can now import a 3D model in After Effects and animate and use the 3D model. Oh, heck yeah. So that's super cool. Um, check out the beta of After Effects. It's it's out there. I will say I do have a lot of fun. Like if I hear about something that's like, oh, this is new in the beta, I will absolutely just, the, I have the beta yeah. of, of After Effects and Premiere installed at all times. Which yeah. saves me from that update problem we just sp <laughs> spoke about. I can do little projects in there. Well, the good thing is you can have the beta and the shipping versions on the same system, yep. so um, they don't step on each other, which is great. And uh, last thing on After Effects um, that I should probably mention is we also added uh, in the beta ACES support. So oh, awesome. Anybody that wants to use an ACES color managed workflow can now uh, do so in After Effects. So that's exciting. It's uh, uh, is it What's it at 1.3 now or whatever? The, I don't remember yeah, what the so number is. I work with Aces a little bit, but yeah. for it's obviously it's a great workflow for 
those who need it. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, um, I think these are some of the most exciting releases we've had in a while. Sure. Um, they're focusing on things that really just, I think, are going to be meaningful to our customers. So yeah. I hope, I hope you all love them. I hope you love it. Yeah. I, yeah. I, again, I, I would never say that I'm like a uh, advocate for anyone, but I've always loved. Uh, you know, the Premier Workflow and everything. I did want to ask, while we have you here, what is um, that guy doing? What? <laughs> uh, we're at Adobe Max. It's your guys' event. Yep. Uh, we're finally back in person again. What kind of gets you excited about coming to this event, either as a vendor or as a, as a person who comes here as a person? That's a great question. Um, so I came over to Adobe with the Frame.io acquisition, and um, I've been in my current role for probably three or four months now doing the, the uh, pro video thing here at Adobe. And I have to say, finally meeting my coworkers in person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've yeah. never That's met people. Nice. So, um, so this has been awesome. And I've just uh, been in customer meetings and briefings all day. So just having the face time with customers, getting to know my coworkers, um, it's been great for me personally. And, and I, think, I think everybody feels that you know, there's a great energy around. You know, yeah. People are excited to see each other again. Well, even the other vendors I've spoken to, they're just like, it, the not, not to like poo-poo any other um, conference or whatever, but those are like business people generally, yeah. and this is almost exclusively creators, illustrators, it's our users. photographers, and users, and it just, it's, yeah. it's a much more, uh, fun yeah. is the simple word, but it, it, it gives you a little energy. Yeah, it does. Versus you get it does. tired on the other ones. And you know, <laughs> one of my missions uh, for the Premiere and After Effects team specifically is more customer engagement. I want to talk to hundreds of customers. I want to talk to as many customers as I can. I want my team to talk to customers, because I want to find out what it is you all want us to do yeah. to make these products even better. Well, and it's hard to go on Reddit and dig through <laughs> the Premiere subreddit and find something where someone's not just complaining about you know, <laughs> you know what? their uh, own system that crashed. Right, the forums all have a, a purpose, um, but it's so much nicer to talk to people face to face and say, hey, you know, what's bugging you? What do you hate? What do you love? Right. What, what kind of features are you looking for? Um, and you know, we write it all down and we take notes, so um, um, I'm excited to see what we do next. Yeah, because that, that's what I've been saying about coming to this is like, that's a that's a great example. Is like you get that uh, interaction with everyone, not just the attendees, but also with you guys to like come yeah. up with um, what you want to see in the product. You know, we're all investors, and in you know, so uh, <laughs> right. that's nice to see. Well, thanks for uh, chatting with me, man. Uh, Thank it's you. Great it's great. And uh, have a have a great show. All right, you too. <laughs>